All right, well, let's talk about all of this in more detail. Mustafa Baguti from the Palestinian National Initiative joins us from Ramallah in the occupied West Bank. Mustafa, we've spoken so many times since the beginning of this conflict. And given everything we've just spoken about today on the program, these raids in the West Bank, everything happening in Gaza, and now what Hamas is saying, how do you feel in terms of hope around a ceasefire? Do you feel hopeful, more hopeful, less hopeful? No, nobody can feel hopeful as long as Netanyahu is in power in Israel. This is a war criminal uh, who failed drastically on the 7th of October, who is constantly afraid of stopping the war because he will be accused of the failure and he will be held accountable for four cases of corruption. And that's why he wants to prolong this war as long as he could. Uh, but it's not just about his personal safety, it's also about his ideology. This man is leading a fascist government with fascist ministers who believe that there should be no Palestinian on the land of historic Palestine and who believe only in the ideology of annexation, Judaization of the West Bank, including Judaization of the Aqsa Muslim Mosque. Uh, this is the kind of ideology we are dealing with. And these people have committed three war crimes, the war crime of genocide, the war crime of ethnic cleansing, and the war crime of collective punishment, including starving people. And now they are conducting biological warfare on Gaza. The only way for this to stop or change will not come from Netanyahu or his government. It has to be international pressure and sanctions on Israel. And the first thing that should happen is a complete military embargo on this Israeli fascist government. Okay, so if there's no ceasefire then, where does that leave Gaza? Where does that leave you in the West Bank? What do you predict is going to happen over the next three, six months? Well, Israel is moving the war into the West Bank. And uh, what, what we see here is that Israel is uh, launching a war with airstrikes and tank attacks on civilian occupied people. They are conducting a war on, on people occupied by them, by the Israelis, uh, in a serious violation of every international law. And uh, uh, in my opinion, they will try to prolong the war, but they will not achieve their goals. Uh, one of their main failures is that they have not been able to destroy Palestinian resistance they have not been able to have complete control over Gaza Strip, and they haven't achieved the main goal of their campaign, which is ethnic cleansing. We have no choice but to steadfast and stay on our land. We have no choice but to resist this terrible occupation and this genocide that is imposed on us. But also, I think what we need, in addition to our steadfastness and resistance, is a serious change in the international community which has to impose really sanctions on, on this Israeli government. Meanwhile, also in Israel, the situation is not good because there is a complete total internal rift that is growing. And uh, I think everybody now understands that Netanyahu does not care about the lives of Israeli prisoners. All he cares about is his own destiny and uh, his own safety. Uh, maybe this will lead to increased pressure from inside but the main factor has to come from outside, through sanctions campaigns on this Israeli fascist government. But there haven't been very many sanctions internationally on the Israeli government. You know, that we've seen a few individuals being sanctioned. We've seen a slight decrease in the number of licenses of arms sales, for example, from the UK in the last couple of days. But these, I would say, can't really be described as significant sanctions. So we're quite far away from what you're hoping would force the winds of change in Israel. Yeah, but we also start to see now the universities have just, have just opened in the United States and in Europe. And you will see huge, massive, mass, uh, in my opinion, campaigns and demonstrations that will pressure different governments. We have no alternative to continue the struggle. We have no alternative but to steadfast and continue de to demand our freedom. Uh, this has been the case of every other people who have been subjected to te terrible colonialism and especially settler colonial project like the Zionist project we are subjected to. 
So uh, we do hope that there is a rift today between governments of so many countries, including even some Arab governments, and the peoples of these countries. And I think this will grow, and it will enhance bigger pressure, and uh, this will change the whole situation. But it needs patience, it needs determination, and it needs resilience. And we have all of that. We will never give up. Okay. Mustafa Baguti from the Occupied West Bank, thank you. Thank you.